Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. Uh, I've rewound time here a little bit, started a new save file so that we could experience something that we missed because I'm very, very curious what Shannon's version of the scene at the end of this is when she goes back down to where the broken track is by herself. Uh, additionally, somebody pointed out in the comments of the previous episode that I totally spaced on the fact that after we use the turntable here, we could also go left down the tracks. So I figure while we're down here checking out the Shannon thing, we may as well have a look at that as well. So let's um, let's turn the track toward the pendulum and the casket and head left. Let's see what we have awaiting us down there. I can't believe it never even occurred to me. I mean, no, I totally can. That definitely sounds like me. But I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that it never even occurred to me to go left and see what else was out here. It's a good thing it didn't turn out to be important. Well, I guess I don't know that. I guess maybe it will turn out to be important. Oh, this is interesting. Damn, it's almost totally intact. I thought it would have been destroyed. Wait, what is this place? It's a recording studio, basically, kind of thrown together, but... When this mine was active, a couple of folk music archivists spent time here recording miner songs. Really academic, like ivory tower types. None of the miners really talked to them much. So they stayed at the margins, observed, took notes, and sometimes they'd get someone on a lunch break to sing into their microphone. Then I guess the power company got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivists some coal script tokens to pay the miners with for their songs. Well, what do you think the archivists were after? Data, I guess? Comparing intonations, subject matter, diction, you know, all those little details no one really thinks about when they listen to music. Yeah, academics are great at that stuff. Let's get out of here. She seems really uncomfortable here. Huh. I wonder if we could have told, um, shoot, what's his name, with the antlers, about this place. I guess he wasn't there at Equus Oils when we tried to go back to him, though. Carrington? Is his name Carrington, or did I completely make that up? I might have completely made that up. So, I wonder, I'm gonna go ahead and go right here as well. I don't remember which branch of the area with the broken tracks was. But I wonder if we have to actually see that in order for Shannon to go back to it. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll check it out just in case. I'm trying to catch myself saying go ahead and because I've noticed that I'm doing it a lot lately and it's bothering me. Is this the right one? This is the one with the tape player. I mean, the track is also broken here. We saw this. Yeah, we'll go back and uh, flip the thing and head both right and left so that we make sure we've seen all the branches before we go to the, ex uh, the uh, auxiliary exit and choose Shannon's dialogue instead of Conway's this time. I have to say, I'm really, really enjoying this so far. Um, this is exactly the sort of thing that I am into. I understand why people were recommending it to me uh, seven years ago when the first act came out. I, ha I have not heard anybody that I actually know say anything about it since then. I wonder if people just forgot about it. Uh, we don't want to go back to the Animal Bones of Robo yet. We want to do this one. That scarecrow is real creepy. I mean, it's not even... It's not even really all that human of a shape. Like, they did not do a good job of making it a scarecrow, scarecrow, but... It would probably still work on a crow. It definitely works on me. It's more of a scare SB, if anything. Oh. 
Okay, yeah, and she says, I wonder what's further down that tunnel. Okay. I do have to wonder if, uh, if she would... If the split up wouldn't even happen. If you never saw that. I'm not going to wonder it hard enough to actually, like, go back... <laughs> to go back through this a third time and try it, probably. But I am curious. This is kind of a horrible noise. You hear that? Kind of a muffled rumbling. Well, maybe we're near water. I mean, we know there was a water source around here somewhere, right? It could be. There was an underground lake around here years ago. I guess that's why they stopped digging so abruptly here. I didn't actually have her say the thing about... When, when we got to the part where she talked about some miners having drowned, I didn't ask her what happened to them. I, I said the other dialogue line. So she didn't tell me about the, uh, the fact that they dug into an underground lake before. Again, I wonder. I wonder how much, how responsive the dialogue is if she would have said the same thing there either way. Okay, so back to Animal Bones and Rowboat. I tried, um, I tried to make different choices at each dialogue branch, and you probably will not be shocked to hear that it didn't result in any major plot changes, but there's some, you know, there's some different lines, there's some different pros to see. I'm not actually 100% clear on what the line is between prose and poetry, there's definitely sort of a poetic quality to some of the things that are happening here. Maybe prose was not the right word. Okay, uh, I don't remember, do I have to say let's go? Yeah, okay, I think I think I said let's go at the exit, and then Shannon said she wanted to go back. Yep, here we go. I'd like to take a look down there. You wait for me here, I'll just go take another look around. Uh, sure, okay, I'll be right here. Yeah, I'm very curious. Maybe we're not going to see it from her perspective at all? Okay, no, we are. This is a little unsettling. What am I... Helmets, okay. I was going to say, boy, that's a lot of human-y shapes. Huh, really? Well, I have to be honest with you, I was expecting a little bit more. And I guess you probably can't... This would suggest that you probably can't wait for her then, as Conway. The fact that Conway comes out by himself either way. The cramped shack is lined with wooden shelves. Dusty stacks of tape reels and notebooks crowd the room, but a bit of moonlight filters through a window near the ceiling. On a small desk in the middle of the room lay three notebooks. The red one is labeled J. Marquez, the green one is labeled R. Marquez, and the blue one is unlabeled. Well, that's interesting. Uh, R. Marquez. I guess let's just start with the first one. Conway opens the red notebook. Pages are covered in disorganized notes, some written horizontally and others scribbled vertically into margins. A few pages are lined more evenly and divided up into charts correlating seasons, lyrics, harmonies, and coal halls. Hmm, I wonder if this is... So this is the, um... Oh, you know what? I bet we didn't see this because we didn't find the stage in our other file. Because th this is like, um, this is what the academics left behind, right? This is their notes, which means that Weaver and uh, and Shannon are descended from them, probably. Or they, they might be the aunt and uncle. 
Let's have a look at the green notebook. I'm kind of surprised that she's not stopping us, because she did run into the shack. On each page is a delicately rendered charcoal drawing. Most are portraits of rugged faces. Near the middle of the book, there are a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. She plays along the minecart tracks, collecting pieces of wire. In one drawing, another young girl sits nearby, intently studying a book. Conway opens the blue notebook. Somehow it knew. The notebook is full of Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas. Near the back of the book, what first looks like it might be... Oh, yeah, this place. Hey, these notebooks are lab labeled Marquez. Your parents are the archivists? No, Weaver's parents are the archivists. My parents were miners. How's your leg? Uh, and then, yeah, okay. We're familiar with it from here. Okay, that's really interesting. Well, I wish I'd gone left in our actual save. I hope that's not going to uh, have any long-term effect. Let's just get out of this dialogue and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and drop back over to our thing. So, one thing that I know about the game, or at least a thing that I think I know about the game, uh, back to the circle, uh, is that there were... I want to go back to the file selection screen. How do I do that? I guess we're going to just close the game and reopen it. Uh, one thing that I believe I know about the game is that there were, like, weird little ARGs between the uh, between the releases of the, the episodes. Um, I do regret having missed out on those. If you were, like, paying attention to that stuff as it was happening in real time, uh, please do feel free to tell us stories in the comments below about the way things unfolded. Because obviously we're going to be able to look at all of the stuff here, but it's different. It's different to look at it after it's finished than it is to be there while it was happening. And unfortunately, uh, I don't really know of a good way to have any sense of what it was like while it was happening, aside from asking people who were there. All right, let's see what Limits and Demonstrations is. Okay, we are someone new. Limits and Demonstrations, a Lula Chamberlain retrospective. Marking the first major public showcase of her work in over 20 years, this retrospective exhibition of work by pioneering installation artist Lula Chamberlain comprises a diagonal slice through time, place, and form. The pieces on display here were individually debuted over a period of 35 years, designed in Chamberlain's various homes and studios between her beloved Mexico City and her native Elizabethtown. They represent a range of scale and impact from the intimate warmth of vertex texture fetch to the infamous visage, the latter of which requires a vertical clearance of over 30 feet. Yet these works share a confounding legacy. In each of their debut exhibitions, they were nearly impossible to install. Galleries and museums balked at the scale, power requirements, and highly skilled labor involved in maintaining these works for display. Some of their debuts collapsed under the weight of logistics, only to be successfully executed much later. And so, just as they describe the outer limits of Chamberlain's range as an installation artist, the geographical edges and vertices of her itinerant home life, and the beginning and end of her distinguished career, the works on display here also trace the extremes of our capabilities and the frontiers of our patience as both viewers and exhibitors. Are we capable of viewing these works as they were meant to be viewed? Do we even want to be? That's a really interesting question, actually. So, hold on a second. Okay, this is one of the installations. I was about to ask, hey, is that a real horse over there? But no, I don't think it is. Title card, Basement Puzzle Number 2. Artist, Sunset, and Horse. 1976, Plaster and Wire. Hmm. What do you think she means by puzzle? Yeah, weird. I guess it's something you can solve? It must be symbols? Artist, sunset, horse? Or or it's an anagram, or like, like a code? 
Well, maybe it's not a puzzle, it's just about a puzzle. And maybe it's a puzzle, but there's no right answer. That's kind of sad. So Emily, Ben, and Bob, these are the people that we thought we saw in the basement of Equus Oils, right? And we definitely heard something else about Elizabethtown. Did Joseph mention Elizabethtown? I can't remember what the context was. What about this one? Huh, sort of a perspective thing? Overdubbed Nam June Paik installation in the style of Edward Packer. 1965, 1973, 1980. Magnetic tape, handheld tape playback head, speaker system, voice of the artist, computer synthesized speech. So wait, why does it have three dates on it? Oh, I read about this one. It's interactive. Oh, how does it work? Well, it's a bunch of old tape, and you run this tape playback head along it, and then just listen to the recordings, I guess? Well, let's try it out. I think you start in the middle. As Bob drags the playback head along the tape, a woman's voice issues unsteadily from the speakers. We start in the middle. Donald and Joseph are in the hallway. I am in an office. The walls are lined with filing cabinets. A few drawers hang open. The door is ajar. A massive computer looms in the corner. There are some punched cards on the floor. Synthetic voice recording, spliced awkwardly into the tape, lists out options in monotone. To examine cards, rotate 30 degrees and advance 7 inches. To leave room, rotate 17 degrees and advance 4 inches. To activate computer, rotate 200 degrees and advance 15 inches. They made an analog adventure game. Huh. Well, I mean, it's an adventure game. The first thing you should always do is type look. Bob moves the playback head to another strip of tape. Encoded in the holes punched through these cards is a first draft of the poetic subsystem. I can't read punched cards by sight. Donald can, I think. Anyway, this version was pretty underwhelming. To leave room, rotate 17 degrees and advance 4 inches. To activate computer, rotate 200 degrees and advance 15 inches. It's... did those numbers not change? I thought we rotated already. Wouldn't it be different? Oh, okay, whatever. I'm not going to tell this lady how her installation works. Uh, try to activate the computer? Bob moves the playback head to another strip of tape. So loud. I love it. I'm now holding two punched cards. On one of them, Joseph has scribbled a note. Caves. The other is blank. I mean, Joseph's a pretty common name. You reckon this could be the Joseph we know? How does the hmm, how does the timing work? If Emily, Ben, and Bob are ghosts in the time that we saw as Conway, I guess that could that could be the case. Or who knows? Maybe something far stranger is happening. To insert caves card, rotate eleven degrees and advance two inches. To insert blank card, rotate ninety five degrees and advance fourteen inches. Well, I mean, we already know what's on the caves card. It's some caves. Let's see what the other one is. Bob moves the playback head to another strip of tape. I'm standing in a hallway. The walls are a blank beige. It's just after winter quarter, but before spring, so there are no students around. Usually, these walls would be papered with flyers announcing new student clubs, looking for roommates, selling old textbooks. But now they're blank. Seems like it skips around a bit. Donald is here, scribbling on a scrap of graph paper. Joseph is here. He can hear me talking into this tape recorder. You sound like an anthropologist, Lula. An antipologist? Oh, an, an entomologist! <laughs> to lean on Joseph's shoulder, rotate 70 degrees and advance 11 inches. To take Donald's hand, rotate 270 degrees and advance 2 inches. Huh. Um... Well, if the Joseph is the Joseph we know, he seems like a nice guy. Sure, lean on Joseph's shoulder. This is the beginning of the tape. I'm at home, alone. Joseph just left. We had an argument, but it'll work out. 
Wow, this is kind of personal. What time period do you think this clip is from? I think we're starting to understand why it had three dates on it, though. The well, title card says 1965, 1973, 1980. So if this is the beginning, I guess that's 1965. And the first one we heard was 1973, then, the middle. I usually start here, in my home, whenever I'm sketching out a new piece. I start by just looking around. My closet door is open, and I can see a few sweaters and a dress I like. I go downstairs, rotate 11 degrees, and advance 4 inches. To think about dresses, rotate 150 degrees and advance 15 inches. Um... Think about dresses? I'm definitely at this point just making decisions arbitrarily. It's kind of a terrible dress, actually. Denim. The breast is embroidered on one side with a crude sketch of a tall man in working clothes, but one of his legs is obscured by the lapel. I guess I just like the cut and the color. I could fall asleep sitting on the bed here, holding this tape recorder and this glass of wine. It's a good thing I'm not holding a cigarette. I think I'll go for a hike tomorrow. Maybe Donald would like to. To fall asleep, rotate 70 degrees left and advance 9 inches. To think about hiking, rotate 115 degrees and advance 7 inches. I feel like we should not fall asleep with a wine glass in our hand. We're on a dirt trail in the park. Or, well, it's not really a trail. It's a trail! Well, it's more like a tendency. There tend to be fewer plants here on the path we've been walking. Now, we're walking at the edge of a massive hole. The dirt gives way to mossy rock as the ground sinks into darkness. Joseph and Donald are following a rope down into the cave. They have computer equipment tied to their backs. So do I. To enter the cave, rotate 65 degrees left and advance 4 inches. Wait, that's the only choice? Yeah, that's the end of that one. So, 65 degrees, 4 inches... That's the last trip, so everything's down here now. The final resting place! Uh, don't be so morbid. To remember a fond gesture, rotate 180 degrees and advance 23 inches. To regret a harsh word, rotate 12 degrees and advance 6 inches. Um, I do a lot of this bottom one on my own time, so maybe let's remember a fond gesture. It's morning now. I'm in the car. I'm driving to work. This is the last recording I'll make on this tape, and then I'll drop it in the mail tomorrow. And then, who knows? I've been recording onto this tape for 15 years, I think? A lot of other things happened. So, here's a story. When I met Donald and Joseph, they were both students, and I was in a band performing on campus. They came to my show, and then we met at some bar and had a few drinks together. Joseph wanted to impress me, so he stole a metal cocktail tumbler and gave it to me. We got kicked out, wandered drunkenly until morning, and finally ended up at a diner. And now I use the tumbler to store extra pens on my desk. Y you want to hear something profoundly internet stupid? I've seen the name of the service, the, the internet website tumbler, so many more times than I've seen this actual word that when I look at this it looks like it's spelled wrong. So, I'm almost out of tape. I guess I'll... I'll just let it run out while I drive. And no instructions? No, that's the end of this tape strip. I don't think we ever reached this long one at the top here. Is it cheating to skip over there? Uh, I mean, I won't tell anyone. Bob moves the playback head to another strip of tape. Think of our work! The research! You'll die in these damn cold caves. And what about those men? You know they'll come back. Yeah, we'll go deeper, that's all. They'll never find us. Do you hear their voices? They're not... They'll find you. But not me. I'm going back to the surface. Stop! Your stupid fight is ringing through the whole damn cave. Joseph's right. We can't stay here. I'm leaving too. But I'm not going back to the surface. I'm taking my station wagon, and I'm heading down the Zero. You'll be lost forever! But we need your voice for the machine, Lula! It only recognizes your voice! I'll send you this tape when I'm done recording. I'll put it in the mail. 
and then you can see what your damned machine does with it. Oh. Yeah, that's curious. Okay, I'm really, I'm really glad that that sound stopped. I thought it was building to something really awful. Am I allowed to um, interact with this one anymore? It looks like I'm not. I don't know that we... I, we definitely didn't hear all the tape, but... Oh. Wow, that's really something. I was about to say, I got distracted. Let me let me get that thought out before I click on this. Um, I really appreciate that the game seems to... That there seem to be narrative branches that are missable. I appreciate... I always appreciate in games when choices are really choices, and they're not just you going down each of the options on a list until you've exhausted them all. Anyway. Title card. Visage. 1984. Unknown media. Yeah. What is this made of? It's a mystery. Looks like ribbon? Or bandages? Oh, have you seen the Invisible Man? It's... Slice a visage to build a visage. A puzzle to its owner. Uh, what? It's a poem I read. I think it was written by a computer. Huh. Well, I think it's lovely. Yeah, I mean, it's really... There's something real strange about it. Also, the, I guess that's a hat with... The brim on that thing sure is curled. Either that or it's a person with horns, which I guess is... more unsettling. Vertex Texture Fetch. Tree, television, and suspended cathode ray tube. 1968, found materials. Wait, the picture on the TV. What is that? It's a lighthouse? No, it's a weather vane or a windmill or something. Wait, is it a lighthouse? Huh. It says suspended cathode ray tube. But it's just sitting, I guess, suspended off. Is something suspended if it's on a table? Wow, that seems precarious. Spinning coin suspended, correcting for angular motion. 1976, found materials. <laughs> Didn't you have one of these? No, Ben did not have one of these. I sort of want to see... This is a weird enough question that I feel like we must ask it. Oh yeah, I did have an old microfilm reader like this. I got it at a garage sale. I couldn't figure out what to do with it. That's my whole shed. Just a bunch of weird, obsolete electronics I thought I might use. Well, someday. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe I'll just sell them for scrap when the price of lead and plastic goes up. I guess everything gets broken down eventually. So that sound is the sound of the coin spinning, it's just that in the display we're constantly... that. I mean, but it's not, because like the shadow is static. The coin has been corrected for angular momentum. What a weird thing. So wait, if we walk back around, can we re-interact with any of them? Looks like no. Alright, I guess we just exit and start Act 2, then? Unless something else is going to happen when we walk to the exit. It is kind of strange that you can only actually see the exit enough to touch it when you're not right in front of it. Yeah, I guess I'm ready to go. Yeah, this... This show is kind of exhausting. What a very strange thing this game is. Attention, Lula Chamberlain, regarding your application. 
Thank you for your application to the Gaston Trust for Imagined Architecture's Annual Fellowship. We received a record number of applications this year, over 100 in total, and regrettably we can only afford one fellowship position per year. As you know, our review process includes a multi-phase blind committee analysis of portfolio submissions, as well as a careful review by a panel of subject matter experts on each applicant's notability and relevance in the field. We must be extremely selective in our process, so as to maintain the standards we have established over our 35 years in operation. Our panel did not select your application. What is happening right here? I guess this must just be a perspective thing? This is somebody's feet? I don't... Uh, mm, okay. We encourage you to consider reapplying next year. Many young artists and architects reapply for a few successive years before being accepted. Sincerely, Dr. Carl Stone Norden, Architect, Gaston Trust for Imagined Architecture. Below the printed ta ta uh, <clears throat> below the printed text is a hastily handwritten note. Sorry for the condescending form letter. Love your work. Unfortunately, I just do the mail here. Your obedient servant, Robert. Uh, I think Lula... You know, it's kind of fan mail. <laughs> the bit at the end. Let's keep it. Uh, Lula opens a folder on her desk labeled Proposals. Lula sorts through documents, all printed on a fading letterhead reading Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. Proposal number one, Site, Hospital. Proposed use, Auto Dealership. Proposal number two, Site, Distillery. Proposed use, Graveyard. Proposal number three, Site, Basketball Court. Proposed use, proposed use Kennel. Huh. Well, I feel like we need hospitals and basketball courts more than we need distilleries, and we need graveyards more than we need auto dealerships and kennels. Distillery still active, but scaling down operation to less than half of site. Distillery built on top of old gra or on top of graveyard originally. Hybrid distillery slash graveyard could share resources. Chapel once repurposed into bottling facility could be repurposed into chapel. Um. Yeah, I'm down with that. I'm a little concerned about that line in the middle about the resource sharing. But yeah, sure. I endorse this. I don't know exactly who I am to be endorsing such a thing. Um, I guess we're going to look at all of them. Let's, let's see about this one. Basketball court abandoned due to hazardous increase in stray dog population. Already full of dogs. Oh, well, that's convenient. Um, I guess if people aren't using the basketball court... Uh, I, sure, endorsed. Okay, there we go. The perspective makes a little more sense now. Hey, look who it is. His name is Carrington. I remembered a thing for once. Busy? Uh, absolutely buried. Have you seen how many proposals I have? Hmm, colorful. The death motif is so common in our speech at this age. We always seem to become morbid whenever we bring up work, home life, the weather. So, my own thoughts are wandering, clearly. I've got a lot on my mind. Clearly. Well, I'll come straight to it, then. The clerk upstairs tells me you've been assigned to my proposal. I've heard nothing in weeks, and I assumed it had been swallowed up by some dragon of administration. But, uh, yeah, let's just wait. Let's, let's give him enough rope to hang himself with here. Lula, my situation is desperate. I have hours. Hours. I must find a suitable venue for my play in time for its sunrise debut, or the last decade of my life will have been a vision within a dream. A fragment. I, uh, well, you know, I haven't had a chance to review it, to be honest. I see. Of course, you're quite busy. I understand completely. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Lula. I'll go now. Oh, Lula. I thought you might like to know. I saw Joseph this evening, just after sunset. We sat for a bit, drank some cold coffee, and talked about university days. Better days. Eh, maybe for him. So this might be right after Act 1, then. Wait, was that not scene 1? Oh, maybe we're, maybe we're zero-indexing our scenes, too. Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. I don't need to read the title cards. I haven't been reading them. Why did I do that? 
Oh, we're at us again. Uh, I like to ask the dog questions. You get a good rest in the truck? Sorry about all this walking. But, you know, maybe we could both use the exercise. I'm saying Conway looks like kind of a big dude. Uh, maybe someone here can point us in the right direction. Yeah, looks like they're still open. Must be the night shift. What do you think they do here? Uh, I don't think it looks like a cathedral. It does sort of look like an office building. Well, I mean, kind of. This, like, these weird gaps where there's, like, a an angled surface back into the building are pretty strange. Also, are these just TVs? That television set is fishing. What do you think this is? When I got my electrician's license, I had to go to this government building in Frankfurt. Kinda low to the ground, a bit older. It didn't really look like this place, I guess, but they all have that same feel. Bureaucracy in the air, and too much concrete. This is weird, but... Do you think we're inside or outside right now? Um... Well, outside, right? There's a television set that's fishing. You don't do that inside. Yeah, outside any man-made structure, I guess. Just feels like it's still inside, since we can't see the sky. Well, maybe someone around here has a better sense of direction. Yeah, hold on. I want to investigate this real quick. Uh, looks like maybe there's not a thing here that I am allowed to investigate. I think this is awfully conspicuous, but apparently Conway does not agree. Nothing weird about all these televisions at all. Maybe we are inside. People don't usually keep televisions outdoors. End of the line? Uh, maybe it's just still under construction? No, that's ridiculous. If it was under construction, it would be spinning. Well, not for us, I hope. I've been on the internet before. You can't fool me. I had a GeoCities page just like everybody else. There's a bell. Oh, I guess we are inside? Well, that didn't have quite a, as much effect as I was hoping. Oh, here we go. Well, here you are. Better late than never, I guess. Just unload the whiskey over there by the elevator. I'll figure something out. Hey, you want to settle a bet? I'm actually pretty busy, but uh, sure, what's up? He says we're outside, but I think we're inside. Wow, okay. Um, Is that like a philosophy thing, or, or, or are you just lost? We're just lost. <laughs> Conway doesn't have any time for the shenanigans. You're lost, so you're not the... Uh, sorry, honest mistake. We're supposed to have a little celebration here at the office, but the whiskey never showed up. I saw your truck and thought, eh, but you don't really look like one of the boys from the distillery anyway. Well, what do the boys from the distillery look like? You've never seen the boys from Hard Times? Well, count your blessings. They cut a grim profile. Well, it's clear you're new to this territory, and I expect you just mean to be passing through. Yeah, we're looking for Dogwood Drive. Do you know where that is? Dogwood? No. You're gonna need to talk to someone upstairs about that. One of the map clerks. But first we gotta get you in the system, so you'll need an appointment with one of the ingestion clerks. Now, let's see. Rick is, boof uh, Rick is booked proofreading drafts all afternoon, and Wanda's out on a site. Hmm. Well, let me make some calls and see if we have anyone free. There's some books over there in the waiting area, or just take a look around. Have you seen our grotesques? I have no- I'm sorry, what? Is that- these? Is that what we're talking about here? It's a little ominous. The television is playing what looks like a nature documentary. A hermit crab scuttles across a beach. Its shell is an awkward shape. It must have once belonged to a different crab.
The television is playing a cartoon about a bird. The cartoon bird collects pieces for its nest. A scarf, a plastic shopping bag, a bit of a young girl's hair. The nest is warm, but precariously fragile. Huh. Maybe we should let Blue sit in the truck. This place is creeping me out. Basically, I don't feel secure out here, and so I do not feel that my dog is secure out here. The television is playing an instructional video on elevator design. It is crucial to maintain proper lighting in an elevator. In the absence of sight, passengers' sense of motion is greatly enhanced. The passenger should never feel as though they are physically ascending or descending. The elevator should create the illusion that the building is flat. This is the mark of a successful elevator design. Huh. That's not a thing people are really trying to do, right? You can definitely tell when an ele elevator's in motion. The television is playing a closed-circuit security feed of a housing project. The feed switches mechanically between locations. A hallway, a disused plot of grass, a stairwell, a mailbox. I hope this one's playing something about fishing. The television is playing a silent video of an empty theater. A microphone sits in the middle of the stage. The lights are slightly dimmed. The speakers hum impatiently. Is the fuzz sound getting louder? I feel like it might be getting louder. Can we walk further away from it? Apparently I'm not allowed to walk down the stairs. Okay, that's fine. We'll just uh, go over here. There's some stairs over here. Can I walk down these ones? Looks like no. Oh, and the receptionist is back. We didn't even have time. You know what? You can wait now, Marianne. I'm gonna go look at these books. Trying to tell me when I gotta go meet a guy. Three books are piled on the table. A service manual for a sewage pump, some architectural plans for a bungalow, and a slim collection of Japanese death haiku. An envelope is protruding from the bottom of the stack. Okay, I'm curious about that. The envelope reads Bureau of Secret Tourism contains several small handwritten brochures with ritualistic directions to bizarre locations. Uh, did I take it? Because I would like to keep that, please. I probably shouldn't mess with the elevator. Hold on, let's go. Marianne is watching me and she disapproves of my behavior. Oh, good. Thought you'd left. People can be so impatient. You never know. Well, I have you meeting with Lula Chamberlain. She's a senior clerk and doesn't usually handle the ingestion process. But she's the only one with room on her plate this evening. My schedule says she's on the fifth floor reviewing some diagrams. The elevator is just back to the left there. Fifth floor. I mean, I could see her. I know she's not on the... That can't be... Hmm. You know, I shouldn't necessarily assume that space works the way that it usually does. But, like, that's her right there, and that's definitely just the second floor. You know, it's kind of weird to use that iconography for get into a thing, even though it does look like get into a thing, because it's almost like a, a symbol that is universally used as exit. She's on the fifth floor, right? I mean, that's what the lady said, but it's definitely not... Third... Third floor bears. We are outside! Also... Are we not on the first floor? We must be on the fourth floor, if that's the fifth floor. I'm gonna click some other buttons. We're gonna look around here. Let's go to the lobby. Is this the lobby? This is the lobby. This doesn't... Okay. This does not add up to me. Let's get back in the elevator. I've done us a terrible disservice. Let us exit the space that is outside of the elevator. Okay, well, what about the first floor? There's definitely not room for five floors in between here and there, so let's see where this takes us. Okay. 
I mean, this would be... Uh, uh, hello? You, are you lost? Very much so, yes. Okay, well, let's get you pointed in the right direction, then. It's a pretty straightforward process. First, you'll need to get a case number assigned. Talk to Clerk Metzstein about that. She's just over there at the end of the room. Happy to help. Okay, can I... I would like to use the elevator again, please. Maybe there's more than one person who looks like this in here. Okay, her office is down on the first floor. Maybe I skipped... By just fiddling around with the buttons, maybe I skipped some information. Maybe we were supposed to go to the fifth floor and learn that her office was on the first floor. Let's go find out. Also, I'm curious about some diagrams. I'd love to see some diagrams right now. I'm just in a real diagram seeing mood. Boy, that sure is bears. I mean, I guess I don't know what I expected. It said it was bears. But why would... We're going to go investigate the bear floor. Maybe, like, very carefully, though. Greg is hard at work examining some diagrams, measuring angles with a plastic protractor, and occasionally scribbling numbers in a small leather notebook. He must be having the time of his life. Can I help you? Wait, don't answer that. Yeah, are you Lula Chamberlain? Um, no. You just missed her, actually. She was up here about an hour ago. She's probably back at her real desk now on the first floor. She barely made a dent in these diagrams. Must have been distracted. Speaking of which... Oh, right. Sorry. I was waiting for him to speak of which, but he was saying, stop distracting me. Did you know your record player's broken? I mean, maybe he likes it this way. Okay, well, I've certainly made it behave in a different way. Would you like to converse about that? He doesn't want to. Well, I'm just going to wander around your office space here, if you don't mind. We're definitely not meeting Lula Chamberlain just yet. This place is too weird to leave immediately. I mean, what do you reckon? Do we just go straight to the bear, uh, the bear floor? It's pretty super weird that there's a bear floor. Can we walk past the elevator? What's over here? I cannot. Not really. Well, he seems to not be upset that we changed the thing. Although he's definitely staring at me now. He got back to work for a little while. Okay, her office is down on the first floor. Let's check out the fourth floor. We'll just uh, descend one by one. We'll get to the bears. The bears are like the fireworks factory. I'm afraid that once we've met them, everything else is going to be ruined. Nothing will be as exciting as Bear Floor was. Well, this sure does look like a place where they are storing archives. Doesn't really look like we're allowed to interact with anything here. We really ought to fashion a crutch or get a cane or something. Hanway's leg seems real rough. Alright, I guess let's just go down again. But, uh, be ready to close the door. Like, keep one hand on that button, you know? Obviously. Obviously bears. Why would I ever press any other button? You think these bears are aggressive? Or Wow, Shannon just got right out there, huh? I would have been more cautious than that. Well, they're interested in us, but no more than Greg was. Well, okay. Again, don't know what I was expecting. I guess you gotta keep your bears somewhere? Is there a giant pipe organ over there? How did I miss that? Hold on a second. We're gonna go down another floor and look at it from there, because, um... 
it's not quite it's not really easy to see from up here i'm wondering if that pipe organ is the surface that all of those tvs are in We'll get to our meeting. Eventually. Uh, this table is... Okay, no, it's not right in front of the elevator. For, for a second there, I thought it was blocking us in. Well, what's on the table? It looks free. And we have some. No, we cannot. Hey, everybody. Don't mind me. Just having my own mobile conference over here. Okay, no, the pipe organ is sitting on top of the wall that has all the TVs in it. And there's a man barbecuing. Okay, I sort of thought when I clicked that arrow that something was going to happen. But it's just some bears majestically watching a man barbecue in front of a pipe organ. And now that I've spoken about the bears, they're looking directly at us, which is... This is definitely a strange sort of office building. I can't I can't tell if it's looping. No, I don't think it is. If it's a whole song, I want to sit here and listen to it.
Huh. Well, I guess that's the song. What a weird thing this game is. Also, do you think we're intended to think that the lighting on the lighting coming out of these crystals actually changed or was that like dramatic effect? Was that our our perception of the performance made the lighting feel different or is the lighting in this room actually the lighting in this building actually controlled via organ? Which one of those two things would be weirder? Also, I know they wanted me to sit and listen to the whole organ performance because I just got an achievement. I feel so accomplished. Well, I suppose it's time for our actual interview. At this point, I have completely forgotten why we were interviewing an ingestion clerk, right? No, wait, Metstein is the ingestion clerk who's going to hook us up with the other clerk? Maybe? Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. I just need your ingestion card and a list of your uh, last five permanent addresses. She is not listening to us. Uh, I don't think I've had five permanent addresses. Oh, my, my sheet has five address boxes and it says to fill everything out. Uh, maybe if you fill out a transient subsheet, we can still get it processed. Go talk to Clerk Bohm and he'll set you up with one. Clerk Bohm is just over there in the corner. Happy to help. Okay, we've been pawned off with remarkable efficiency. That's a bureaucrat for you. Howdy. You here for a transient sheet? No problem. He rummages through some papers on his desk. Happy to help. He opens a few folders and quickly closes them. Um, actually, it looks like I'm out, but I know there are some back in the archive. You'll have to put in a special request with Clerk McMillan. She's the document czar. Straight back at the end of the office there, by the file cabinets. Hey, this is just a runaround. Where's Lula Chamberlain? Oh, no, it's... I mean, well, that's her right there in the cardigan. Yeah, we'll just uh, skip some of the some of the runaround here. I was hoping that if I just said her name loud enough, she might volunteer herself to us. Having fun in the paperclip labyrinth? Well, you made it eventually. You look exhausted. I'd offer you my seat, but my ankles are turning on me. Arthritis? Dr. Truman says my joints are eroding one another. They've been collaborating for decades. It's only natural they want to kill each other now. Well, enough about my hateful wrists and ankles. This concrete bunker of an office is just a waypoint for you, I'm sure. Where is it you're trying to go? Uh, we're looking for 5 Dogwood Drive? Hmm. Dogwood Drive. That's funny. You know, I used to live on a Dogwood Drive. I mean, this was years ago. A grimy old house. Basement full of insects, attic full of birds. I had a few roommates. We all worked at the university. I had a dog, I drank whiskey and beer, and made sculptures. But that dogwood was a surface road. With a name like that, it would have to be. What are you doing on the Zero? Uh, well, a gas station attendant told us we'd need to take the Zero to get there? Gas station attendant? I see. Friendly blind man, about my age, hangs out with an old cat, likes to pretend he's a poet? Uh... Old cat? I don't think I saw an old cat. Did we see an old cat? Oh, no cat anymore. Um, sorry to hear it. Joseph and I used to work together, and we lived together. We were friends. But that was a long time ago. We haven't spoken in years. Do you know why he's pointed you this way? Well, it's because he's still in love with me, of course. And now he's implicated you quite inconsiderately. And in your condition, it's appalling. So, I'm very sorry for wasting your time, but I'm afraid you've been misled. Excuse me. Uh, well, uh, wait. Well, that doesn't help me find Dogwood Drive. Where's the Dogwood Drive you lived on? Maybe it's the same one. No, it's not possible. The Dogwood Drive I lived on is now called Pale Dogwood Drive. They've renamed all the streets, you see. Too many streets with the same names. It was never a problem before, but now we have these databases. It's all too confusing for the computer. The computer has no sense of ambiguity, so it proclaims an error. Name collisions, they call them. 
So my dog would drive is pale dog would drive, and another might be large-leafed dog would drive, or Himalayan flowering dog would drive, and so on. But one of them is still just dog would drive, or so we might hope. It's really a matter of consulting records, of which we have an abundance here. Okay. Do you have a record of those streets? It seems like we might need it. Well, I expect we must. They'll be up in Archives and Records, fourth floor. It'll be filed under O for autonyms, probably, or G for generic, maybe S for specific, depending on which part of the street name was changed. That's really not helpful. Can we... No, she's done... She... Okay, she's just done talking to me. What do you think? How much of this whole bureaucracy thing do you think is just performance art? I guess bureaucracy couldn't be performance art. It pays too well. Do you think they're going to make us go to the bear floor? Okay, we are looking for... Basically any file box. Let's just look at every box, shall we? Damn, this place is a mess. Okay. Hmm. Take a look through that logbook, I guess? Maybe there's some kind of system to all these boxes. And I'll just start digging. The small logbook has a smart leather cover. A few notes are scribbled on the inside covers. Most pages are just lists of titles, names, and dates. Uh, I guess let's start at the start? Note in logbook. Document staff, please do not transfer any more records from the storage unit until we get the new file cabinets in. We're up to F, and that will have to do for now. Instruct clerks to focus on activities beginning with the letters A, B, C, D, E, or F, or activities most likely to involve research on subjects beginning with those letters. For example, cars is okay because it, because it involves automotive, driving, brakes, etc., but air quality is not okay because it relates to health, safety, pollution, etc. That's a hell of a system. Uh, all right. Several documents relating to sporting competition venues were quickly checked out and back in over a period of a few days. Basketball courts, baseball fields, alleys, and parking lots. I wonder why it's page 1 and then page 14 and then no other pages. That seems odd. A single set of documents relating to coal mining operations was checked out and back in by several different people within a few hours. It's weird. Failing Antique Shops folder is missing. Listed checked in on page 63, but not present. Yeah, let's look at page 63. Failing Antique Shops, Monday 3 p.m., signee Ed Bohm. That's curious. Do we know how Lisette's Antiques is doing? Have we gotten any information on that? I'm not sure we have. What about the inside back cover? Uh, right, I already looked at that. I guess let's put the logbook away, because there's definitely no useful information in here. Nothing? Me neither. Half of these boxes aren't even labeled, and the rest are all from the first few letters of the alphabet. I couldn't find anything with an O or a G or an S. Maybe that clerk knows somewhere else we can look. Well, somebody must. Either that or we're just going to slowly starve to death here. I suppose we could try to eat one of the bears. Maybe we should just eat Greg. Thing is, there's a bunch of bears and they're all together. They'll probably, like, um... They'll probably community defend against us. Greg... He's all in his lonesome, and he's very easily distracted. Just wait for him to, like, look at the record player or something and then pounce on him. Okay. The good news is we've already met Ed Bohm. Although apparently I don't remember. Oh, we're just talking to Lula again. That's also fine. I was going to ask him about the antique shops. Nothing? That's unfortunate. Well, they must still be in transit. You see, we've only moved into this new venue somewhat recently, and it's all a bit in progress. This was a cathedral not so long ago. Can you believe it? Uh, sort of. And then the Bureau reclaimed it. 
the old congregation has been directed to one of our storage facilities for their activity. That's where you'll find the street name records, I expect. At the church. Marianne at reception can give you directions. Just come back here when you have the files and we'll begin the necessary paperwork to have the information analyzed. Oh, and while you're out on the road, you might want to stop and see Dr. Truman about your leg. He's a specialist regarding ailments of the joints and limbs, and I know he works at night. His home office is in a small neighborhood on the east edge of Bowling Green. Here's his card. Do stop and see him. That leg is a miserable sight. Take care of each other. Well, I'm sorry my leg is upsetting you. Well, I guess we, in the end, got some useful information out of this. It has been a real weird experience. Wait, what is going on on the- are these rats? They're very strangely shaped. Was this here before? Did I just not notice? I mean, I'm pretty not observant, but I feel like I would have noticed all the movement. This crab is wearing an empty inkjet cartridge as a shell. Ah, that's what they are. Huh. You know, this seems like maybe a good place to stop. I think we're about to get on the road and discover some uh, some new stuff. That seems like the sort of thing that we maybe ought to just start with tomorrow. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all are enjoying this adventure as much as I am. It's it's real different from a lot of other games, huh? Uh, come back next time tomorrow for maybe us actually spending some time on Kentucky Route Zero. And we'll see you then.